Welcome to a new video on my Home Automation Open Hub and Node-RED series. This project started more than one year ago when I put my Node-RED controlled NeoPixel display together inspired by Lametric. I have been using this device for more than one year now and purchased part for a second display. When the first display came to life I released three videos. The first was a summary of how the entire solution works followed by two more videos focusing on the Node-RED flow and also on the Arduino sketch running on the ESP8266 behind the display. This is the fourth episode of this project where I give a few thoughts on the physical build of the display. This project is a mix of purchased components, 3D printed parts and a little bit of DIY. The microcontroller running behind the display is an ESP8266. I'm using a Wemos D1 Mini clone for this. I will power the whole project from a decent USB power supply, something that can deliver about 1.5 amps. You also need a LDR, a light dependent resistor, for brightness control and a pull down resistor. Second is the NeoPixel display. I got mine for an eBay seller in Germany. I will include the link in the video description, but I'm sure that you can find the same model in other eBay stores and on AliExpress as well. Prices may vary, I probably did play an extra for mine. This display is on a flexible PCB and it has 32 by 8 NeoPixel SMD5050 LEDs. This is the WBS2812B chips which are no, uh, commonly referred as NeoPixels. As you can see it has three connectors. On the left it is marked as D in 5 volts and ground. On the other side is D out 5 volts and ground and D in and 5 volts in the middle. We will only use the left one which says D in wires, I mean all three wires, the others will be disordered. The display came with one set of extra wires with a plug that plugs into the D in end. I have used that and soldered it to the ESP. The red wire goes to 5 volts, the white to ground and the green one to D5. For the non-electrical components we need a 3D printed raster mask. I got this from Thingiverse, link in the video description. This is printed as two identical halves in order to fit onto most 3D printers. The files you can download from Thingiverse contain the G-code as well. I recommend using that as it contains fewer brims than the what a standard 3D slicer would generate and it's much easier to clean the print afterwards. Don't forget to print two pieces for a full mask. You also need a black acrylic sheet. I got mine from a local sign shop who sells all sorts of acrylic and plastic products. It was advertised as black acrylic. It is like a um, welding glass or a glass that you use to view the solar eclipse. We also need some ordinary tracing paper for <coughs> we also need some ordinary tracing paper to further diffuse the light. The assembly is very straightforward. Super glue the two halves of the mask. This will go onto the display directly. There are small SMD resistors in between the LEDs and this mask is designed to sit on top of those resistors. When I first put the mask over the display I noticed that the light is leaking through the adjacent boxes so I spray painted the mask with some black spray paint that I had lay laying around in the garage. I used a sheet of MDF as a back of the screen. This helps to keep the display flat. Do not forget to drill holes for the cables and the wires. I desoldered the middle wire and also the three wires on the D outside. Still I drilled some holes uh, where the solder joints are just to make sure that the screen stays absolutely flat. I secured the mask using wood screws from the back. I could have used shorter screws but these are the ones that I had around. Just make sure that the display is aligned underneath the mask and the pixels are in the middle of the squares. Next I cut two sheets of tracing paper and glued it on top of the mask. Let's just use small dabs of super glue around the edges. As you can see it is important to keep all these layers flush on each other. If the tracing paper separates from the mask the edge will be blurred. This is where the acrylic comes in which is going to keep all these layers sandwiched on top of each other. I super glued some standoffs uh, onto the edge of the acrylic beyond the edge of the mask. I screw into these standoffs from the other side of the MDF to keep it pressed against the display. And that is it. The display is complete. Just don't forget to remove the protective foil from the acrylic sheet. And there is one more thing on the electronic side. 
I soldered the LDR in between the 3.3 volts and the A0 pin of the VMOS D1 Mini and the 10K pull down resistors between A0 and ground. This will serve as the ambient light sensor. The resistor is in the heatsink tube. I drilled an extra hole just above the display where the LDR is going to poke through. It will still be behind the acrylic sheet, so it's not going to be visible from the front. The display is now done. I secured the components with double-sided tape to the back of the MDF and cable tied the USB cable to one of the screws so it doesn't pull on the USB port of the VMOS. The display goes into an IKEA picture frame. This has an area of 50 by 50 centimeters, which is plenty for the display. I created a custom mask which has a large cutout for the display and a few smaller cutouts for pictures. Make sure that the cutout for the display is big enough so it doesn't block the light to the LDR. The acrylic is still bigger than the cutout so the edges will not be visible from the front. I used more MDF to create a frame behind the mask to hold the, the display in the middle of the picture frame. This has a cutout behind the mask where the entire display fits in and held in place with some tabs so it doesn't fall out. And I used more cable ties for strain relief on the USB cable. And this is where we are now. The display is working, the frame needs some pictures to complete. I hope you like this video. This project sounds complicated, but in fact it is made from some simple elements, nothing that you wouldn't be able to do with a little bit of practice. If you have not seen the first in this series, you can click on the thumbnail here or watch some of my other videos. You can also click on my lovely face to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.